All right, everybody. Good morning. Um, and it is really morning. It is 447. It is 447 in the morning. I hope you got a good night's sleep. My life is so hectic that I decided the only way I am going to get a video made is to do it before the sun comes up. So here we are. All right. Now then, if you can hear me, put a one. And as soon as I'm sure everything is going forward, then we will get on with this. All right. So I want to show, I want to share. Let's see. Going to be talking about... Um, Okay. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about this morning. I'm going to be talking about uh, John Jack Showalter. And it, I recognize that there's a danger in pointing at a person and saying, you, 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 you did it. But I also think that it's quite foolish to avoid conversation about the last people that had contact with these, any of these four kids. And my, my first video that I did well, may it not have been my first video, but the first video re regarding an individual person related to this uh, terrible, awful, um, I mean, let's face it, it's a mass murder, right? Four people dead in one location. Um, my, the first person was, uh, was Jeremy Reagan. And I had a lot of trolls that came in um, during that period of time that, that I was talking about this and, and they were saying, this is so cruel. You're being so horrible to talk about Jeremy Reagan. Well, I defended that. I defended that by saying, number one, he lives next door. And, and this essentially the location of the home where the murders occurred, it is essentially a large cul-de-sac that has a few big apartment buildings, and then a couple of small houses. There is one road in, there is one road out. And unless the killer left on foot and he either walked up the back hill and over out onto the main road, or the killer walked down a, just a straight, narrow, concrete, you know, sidewalk, um, toward the, toward the, um, fraternity house, then the killer's got to live in that cul-de-sac or at the very least knows someone in the cul-de-sac has access to an apartment in the cul-de-sac. Okay. So that is my opinion. I'm, I i do not I'm not a detective. I don't work for the, for the sheriff's department. I'm not there on the ground, but but studying and watching everything that's come out on this um, story, that that is the logical um, conclusion for me, is he's got to live there. The guy's got to live there somehow, some in sh some shape, form, or fashion, or or he went out. He went up that back hill and over onto the main road where perhaps someone picked him up or there was a car waiting. I don't think that's likely. I think there's a great deal of, um, I think there's a great deal of, of danger in being discovered. If one climbs up a hill at 3 AM and has somebody pick you up and you're covered in blood, wouldn't there have been blood all uh, caught up in the snow 
Um, well, no, I guess there wasn't snow at that time, though, was there? It was cold. It was icy. But I don't think they actually had snow on the ground until like a week later. But but nonetheless, I you know, there definitely would have been evidence there with with, you know, the the overall trauma to the bodies, the the amount of blood in that house was massive. And we saw evidence of that with it seeping, you know, through the siding and onto the concrete. So I talked about Jeremy Reagan. That was number one because Jeremy Reagan inserted himself into this story. He did. And those of you that are that are standing up, you're saying, no, no, it's wrong. You can't talk about Jeremy Reagan. Don't talk about Joe. Don't talk about this person, that person. Why? These are people specifically that have inserted themselves into the story. They did not do one tiny, simple little interview. They began to make the story about themselves. And, and from a psychological perspective, that is quite interesting. Why? Well, let me ask you this question. God forbid your next door neighbor, the people living in the apartment across the hall from you, what, what happens if, if they meet some horrible end and it gets broadcast over all of mainstream media and it becomes, it captures the attention of the nation? Are you, are you going to insert yourself into the story? Are you going to give out interviews over and over and over and over? Are you going to want to see your photo placed on all newspapers, shown up on Fox News? No, you won't. The greatest majority of people would say, hey, man, I didn't, I didn't see nothing. I don't know these people. I can't help you. And we would keep on walking. If you agree, put a one. If you agree that if someone in your life were to, put, were to meet a tragedy that captured the attention of the nation and, and you had cameras there, Ashley Banfield's show is there, people trying to interview you, are you going to be willing to have your photograph and your name wrapped up in a great murder mystery? Or are you going to just keep on walking and say, no, thank you, not my monkeys, not my circus? If they're not your monkeys, put a one. If you would happily join the, the circus and be a part of all these interviews, put a two. I'm just curious. Don't mess with my toot toot. Don't mess with my toot toot. All right. So you can see that most people would not. Now, if it's somebody that's close to you, if perhaps it was a friend of yours, someone that you spent some time with, you might do an interview. You might do an interview and talk about, you know, what was fun about this person, the things that they achieved, their accomplishments, that sort of thing, right? Kind of kind of kind of your way of memorializing your friend. But let's be clear about Jeremy Reagan. Jeremy Reagan claims to have not known these four people. Think about that. He didn't know them. According to him, he didn't see anything. He, there were no lights that he, that he would have made it possible to see anything. Oh, really, Jeremy? You're paying attention to the lighting now? You didn't see anything. You didn't know them. You, In fact, that means that you don't know anything more than what I know. But now you're paying attention to where the lights are, the lights that used to work and now they don't work. You know, being aware of your surroundings, inserting yourself into a murder mystery, those are things that, you know, do not make a murderer but they do make other people curious about what's making you tick. So, so my, my discussion about Jeremy Reagan was not cruel. This was a guy that did multiple interviews, big name interviews, as well as small, obscure YouTube channels. He wanted to be a part of this story. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why. 
number one, I thought, okay, well, he's a law student. Perhaps he thinks this is somehow going to help him in his lawyering career. No, he said becoming a criminal defense attorney is third on his list of things he might like to do with his law degree. So he kind of he kind of separated himself from it in that fashion. And then he and then he in in an extraordinary interview where he's now changed his complete personality from the first interview to now this final interview where he's, you know, a robot. He he says in a shocking jaw-dropping moment and I and I had visions of Barry Morphew. He said Oh yeah, I I love true crime. Yeah, I watch it all the time. I think about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure do. But <laughs> I thought, gosh, this guy is is worthy of some attention. And so, I was respectful. I did not engage in wild speculation. We watched his interview, and I commented on what it was that I was observing. Okay, so it's respectful. And so this conversation about John, Jack, show alter, show alter. I'm going to attempt to do the same thing. Now, he is the exact opposite of Jeremy Reagan. Where Jeremy Reagan is not involved, he didn't see anything, he didn't know them, and yet he inserted himself into this story to where his face was everywhere. John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith, his name is Jack's name too. I mean, these guys, these these guys have so many names, and when I say these guys, I mean the Show Alter family. There's lots of shared names. This is a this is one of those uh, elite European heritage families. That's right. Less than ten thousand show altars in the world, and they all seem to be mixed in mixed up with high level college athletics, medicine. And yes, even the show, baseball, the big one, um, uh, medicine, lots of specialists, doctors. In fact, John Jack Showalter's father is an orthopedic specialist surgeon. That is impressive. His mom, too. She is a medical doctor. His brother, well, he's a little stud muffin. Um, he's a big shot uh, quarterback or, or was a quarterback for um, a college. And later, I'm not going to go. I don't want to go into all the family members. And here's the reason I don't want to go into all the family members. Because they're all impressive. Because everybody's living in mansions. Even, even a show altar in Lebanon, Indiana. You know what else? The show altar elite European family of less than 10,000 in the world. You know what else they do? They love to hunt. They love to hunt. Shades of very more few. That's right. They're not hunting chipmunks like we had Barry Morphew doing. No, they go for the big animals. The big ones. You know, like you find in Africa. This family, Buzz is the father of Jack. Now they call him Jack. His first name is John. There's There are John Showalters. Uh, show there are Jack Showalters. 
There are Larry show altars. There's Buzz show altar. There's Buddy show altar. I mean, the show altars are a big damn deal if you're into family trees and such. The majority of the, they can't, they, guess where they came from? Those of you that like conspiracy theories, those of you that like to look at the royal family and the heritage and where these people came from and who were their offspring today, those people, you know, like Freeman Fly. I used to love that guy. I'm not sure where he went. I love to listen to him. Um, if you like that kind of thing, this belief that there's a certain number of families in their direct lineage and that kind of thing, well, the Showalter family was originally coming out of Switzerland. <laughs> you can't make this up. Switzerland. And they escaped unfair taxation and a multitude of other sins. And they ended up in Germany and France and somewhere else. Germany, France, and Crimea. But now they've all moved here to the USA. There's a few left in Germany, not very many. There's a few in um, Canada, Alberta, Canada, not many. The greatest majority of the show altars are, that's right, the U.S. of A, the, the heart of capitalism, making your money, get, making your mark, leaving your heritage, right? Why am I going into all this boring history? Why? Because when it comes to psychology, when it comes to the things that create drive and instinct in a person, our identity matters. The, the identity of the individual is first formed in the overall identity of the family. If you grow up in a family where the largest majority of people in the family are drug addicts and alcoholics, you have a different worldview than people who grow up in a family where everybody is expected to become an attorney general Everyone is expected to engage in athletics and at least at a bare minimum be competitive at the college level. Yes, we have some show altars that are training currently for the Olympics. It's a very impressive family, people. Very impressive. Multiple doctors, not, not just Larry and, and his wife, multiple doctors multiple physicians throughout history, many elected officials, both state elections as well as federal government. There's even an attorney general thrown in here or there if you look at the Crow family and some of the offshoots of the show altars. And, and so if you happen to be one of the unfortunate children born into one of these families, notice I said unfortunate. We all have our burdens to carry people. And you may not think that, you know, a 17, 16, 17 year old kid who wears Ralph Lauren as his, you know, knocking around clothes, whose first car is an Audi, who aspires to a Jaguar, whose, whose weekend trips are to Boston to have lobster at Angelo's on the Bay. You, you may think that that life that you would be happy and all would be well, but I'm going to tell you, those kids in those types of families, it's not all fun and games. It's terrible burden. It's a terrible, terrible burden because by the just the law of averages, the way that statistics work, the majority of us are in danger of mediocrity. We're all going to pretty much be average. We're not going to be very low in, in skills and accomplishment. We're not going to be extraordinarily high in skills and accomplishment 
That's why they call it normal because most people are in that range. So for you and I, as healthy people, we say, no, 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 I'm normal. I went to school. I made A's, B's, and a few C's. I graduated in the middle of my class. I have a great job making about a median income. I live in a house that is no bigger or smaller than all my friends. I'm living a normal life and I feel good about that. I'm not, I'm not living a life of quiet desperation where when I sleep at night, I have fear that the roof is going to cave in on my head and I am not living in a life where I crave a mansion just to prove that I matter. I'm normal. I'm middle class and I like it that way. Nuh uh. You get born into one of these families a bush, a show altar, a Rockefeller. You get born into one of these families. We are not normal. We are the mediocre. We're the peons. We are the slave class. Do you want to be that kid? Do you want to be that kid who, if you come home with A's and B's, maybe C's, that you get to hear all about what a fail you are, failure you are and how daddy's not giving you any money, any of the family riches? You'll be written out of the will, Jack, if you kill anyone. Correct? And if that's not bad enough, that you've got to live up to the name that's attached to your identity. If you've got to live up to the name that's attached to your identity, you've got to try to be, you've got to try to walk in the same shoes as that, those attorneys general, all those surgeons and physicians. How about that hot shot stud muffin quarterback brother? Yeah, old Jack, he had a rough life. Things have not been easy for Jack. Know what I mean? Well, here's why I'm bringing this up. Because we know now that Jack, Showalter, that he is a member of Delta Tau Delta fraternity. In fact, that was pretty much his identifying information on his social media. Except now all the social media is gone. They're cleaning the internet of old Jack. Even Jack's mom and dad, their social media stuff, they 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 had a they have um they have an outreach, a medical outreach in Kenya, Africa. Um, they have homes in South Africa, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. Um, but they're busy. This family has been busy putting their money to use to hire this particular um, type of attorney who goes around and cleans up all these messy internet sites. You know, like if you have... You have a channel on YouTube and you have some cretin that becomes obsessed with you and they begin making, you know, a, a unfair, untrue statements about you. And, you know, then you can hire one of these uh, one of these uh, social media uh, attorneys and they'll go in and clean up all the rumor mill and, you know, get all that clean. And so Jack is enjoying that luxury right now. Mommy and daddy are cleaning things up. You don't believe me? Do a quick Google of John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith, John Jack Showalter. Go ahead and do a quick Google. It's very difficult to find a photograph of old Jack. Now, th these YouTubers... Thank goodness, thank goodness for our YouTubers, 
because people like plunder truth and transparency and others, they have now memorialized those photographs. They put them in a form that is going to be difficult for the, for these attorneys and their search engines to find these photographs and clean them up. So we do have some photographs of Jack, but there probably won't be any new ones coming out. They're quickly erasing what they, what, what was out there. Right. So Jack has a great deal of benefits that you and I do not have by way of being a member of the elite class. And I don't mean those people don't work for it. They do work for it. His mom and dad had to work their butts off to get through medical school. His mom and dad work their asses off every day. I guarantee you they're working 12 hour days. I've seen it. I've lived it. I know how that other half lives. Okay. They're, they are, they're working hard, but there's still a lot of things they have access to that you and I don't have access to. Those types of attorneys, those types of services are very expensive. So imagine that you're Jack and you grow up in the shadow of your quarterback brother, your famous uncle, grandfather, great grandfather, grand, there's a famous grandmother. There's a cousin who's training for the Olympics. Um, imagine you grow up in this highly elite family where the worst possible thing that could happen to you is that you could be average. You think that might create a situation for a little bit of anger, a little bit of anger maybe? Because what we now know about Delta Ta Delta is that Jack had a lot of trouble. Now, I don't know what's causing Jack's problems. I don't know if Jack has an alcohol problem. I don't know if Jack just felt entitled and he felt like people were not deferring to the greatness of the show alter name. I'm not sure what was creating these troubles for Jack, but I can promise you this for a Greek, for, for a fraternity, we're not even talking about sorority. Okay. For a fraternity to decide you are a liability. Guess what? Jack, you're out of control. Now, you know you're out of control. I know that you're out of control just because of the things I know about the Greek life and fraternities and what you guys typically engage in. And if they got rid of you, you're in trouble, Jack. The very fact that they kicked you out tells me everything I need to know about your ability to manage your emotions and that when your emotions get triggered, that Jack acts out. Now you may say, hey, hold on, Jules, why are you talking to Jack? Is he here? Well, I don't know, guys. What do you think? What would be your guess? Mom and dad or busy hiring, reputation handlers, they're cleaning up the internet. They're, they're erasing all the family photos and connections possible. What do you think? Do you think Jack is here? If you believe that Jack is watching all of these YouTube video videos, reading all the Reddit threads, put a one. If you think Jack hasn't got a care in the world and that he's just going for his morning swim, no problems, no harm, no foul, Put it to just curious. Oh, yeah. Jack's watching. He's watching. Um, 
not just that, but their attorneys are watching as well. Everybody's watching. Okay. Um, why are they watching? Because, because it's the family is the business. You, you got a very, um, successful mom and dad. You've got this really, really notorious murder scene. And guess who appears to be the last interaction with Maddie and Kaylee? It was Jack. That was the last apparent interaction within about an hour of them being slaughtered. Kind of like when you kill a deer and you want to, you know, field dress it. You got to cut their throat, let them bleed out. So you keep the meat clean. Incidentally, old Jack. Some photos of, you know, his first kill. Field dressing animals in Africa. K-bar knives laying on the ground. Why do I say that he was possibly, probably the last known interaction with uh, for sure Maddie and possibly Kaylee? Because we know that minutes before Maddie and Kaylee grabbed their food and ran away from Jack, we know that Maddie turned around and looked at Jack and pointed at him, arm outstretched, and says loud enough that you can hear it above the sound of people talking, ordering their food, drunk people laughing, having fun. You can absolutely clearly hear Maddie say to Jack, fuck you. There's all this other conversation going on. There's all these kids laughing, having fun, enjoying themselves after a night out. You can hear the people cooking inside the, the grub hub. So how loud do you think she had to have said that for it to be so easily discernible on the tape, on the, on the Twitch stream? She says it clearer than day, pointing right at him, F you. Why? Why? And they were aware of Jack. Maddie and Kaylee were aware of Jack. They were watching him. They kept checking in and looking at him, and they did not look happy. It does appear that he got ditched. It also looks like they're laughing at him. What do you think? A kid who grows up among the uber-wealthy the uber successful, the Olympians of our time, the gladiators of our world, the football, you know, people. So little Jack grows up in a family where brother is a gladiator. And everybody has to go and watch the gladiator in the arena perform. And they all have to lift their glasses in celebration to Jack's brother. Never to Jack. Jack's grades are not particularly good. And trust me, when your dad is an orthopedic surgeon and your mother's pediatrician, it doesn't feel good to be making C's and B's. I think Jack may have been having a little bit of trouble with anger. You know what I mean? As evidenced by a fraternity saying, hey, man, you are bringing way too much heat on us. Don't know what's going on with you, but yeah, we're done. We don't want your name associated with us any longer. Yeah, but don't you know I'm a showalter? Yeah, 
but all of this explosive anger crap that you got going on, you, no, we don't want to deal with this. Apparently the university did not want to deal with it either. And apparently the corner bar did not want to deal with Jack's anger. You see, Jack got asked to leave that same bar, that very same bar that Kaylee and Maddie were at. Jack was kicked out of that for what? Quotation marks. Being creepy with some of the girls. Now, make no mistake about it. Jack's an attractive guy. Jack's a handsome, good-looking kid. That's another thing that stands out on the Twitch stream for the Grubhub. Did anybody else notice that Jack didn't really get greeted by anyone except Joe? We're going to get to that in a minute. So you're telling me that this good looking, handsome guy, rich family, very well connected in the upper echelons of government and medicine. Nobody wants to say hello to him. That doesn't match with what I know about college life. It's the beautiful kids, the ones that come from the wealthy families. Those are the ones that tend to take center stage in these social dances where people are just like, yo, Jack, what's shaking, man? Great to see you. Good go. Yeah, good party. Great. It's so good to see you. Yeah, how'd you do on your test? Yeah, me too, dude. Failed it big time. Go. Woo. Yay, Vandals. We didn't see any of that happening with Jack. In fact, it looked like Jack was an out-of-towner. <laughs> Nobody had any idea who he was or what he represented. Nothing. He was... Persona non grata. Very interesting, right? Very interesting. In a small university, a kid who was Delta Ta Delta, well-connected, wealthy family, high connections in medicine, federal politics and state politics, good-looking, physically attractive, and no one wants to say, hey, Jack, hey, Jack, how you doing? You're so handsome. You don't get any of that. It's very interesting. Sometimes what you do not see is far more instructive than what you do see. Pay attention, right? All right. I don't know if he's awkward, um, Nurse Bev. He doesn't appear to be like just, in, and we don't have a lot to go on. We're just kind of reading body language, right? But he's with Joe. Now, he and Joe seem to be besties. They seem to be doing great together. And, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But he does seem to be relaxed, like he was spontaneous um, when the kid comes up in the tank top, um, it, he pretends to like bow down and worship like you're the man, you know, you're the ice king, you're not cold and, and whatnot. So there's a little bit of that. And it's that to me looks quite neurotypical. That looks like someone who's comfortable socially, right? He's clearly athletic. You can watch how he moves his body and, and whatnot. He's a very handsome guy. Um, I don't know. It just there were a few people on the on the Twitch stream that I thought, yeah, they're pretty socially awkward. But it that didn't that didn't I didn't have that feeling watching him at all. He just looked like to me that everybody was like pretending not to see him. All right, now then. Um, so Jack has an anger problem and we have real evidence of that anger. He's, he is completely kicked out of his fraternity and that takes, that is a legal position 
and the fraternity has to collect episodes. They have to document episodes. They have to have witnesses. There has, there is due process and the, the fraternity has to make their case for why this person has violated their agreement with the, um, with the Greek organ, the home organization, the national organization. And then, and then if they make their case properly and the person, the young person has no defense, um, then they get kicked out and they lose that connection. And here's something else that's quite telling to me, y'all. He did not go back and clean up his social media accounts. He did not go and take off all those, you know, I'm a full member of the Delta Ta Delta. I've never heard of somebody saying I'm a full member. I don't even know what that meant, but he did. And then when they kicked him out, when he's excommunicated, he didn't clean that up. That too can cause a person problems, but he didn't, he didn't clean it up. Only once it came out that Jack's got some problems. Only then did someone go into the internet and begin to clean things up? So Jack is in the process of being erased from the internet. All right. What you are looking here at here, this is actually police body cam of the fraternity house that is um, a fourth of a block, several hundred yards from Kaylee and Maddie's house. This is the body cam of the response of the police to the 911 call that was made at 3 a.m. where they gave this address. Interesting, right? Now, the reason that it's just not the film is not rolling, it's just static, is because you can't really make anything out. The guy's walking, it's blurry and bumping along. You can't really see anything. So um, I was just going to show you how dark it is. And right behind this guy, this guy that's looking at the fraternity house, right behind him, 25 yards, is supposedly Kaylee and Maddie and Ethan and Zana being slaughtered. That's quite chilling, isn't it? At the very moment, according to what the police have said in terms of their timeline, when the cops are out here walking around in this field, we are now inside the window of when the murderer would have acted. It's chilling. Do, how, do, how do you separate the two? Now, this, of all the mysteries from this investigation, these cops, to me, this is the biggest one. And we often say in this whole true crime genre on YouTube, we often say there are no coincidences in true crime. Correct? Hey, Natalie. There are no coincidences. So how is it that you've got, this is what's so crazy to me. You've got Maddie and um, uh, Kaylee on video where a kid who has a bona fide anger problem and is currently acting out in rage. When I say currently, I mean he's in this time frame in his life. He's getting kicked out of fraternities. He's getting kicked out of bars. He's a mess. He's out of control emotionally. They're all together. They're on the, the Twitch stream. You can see the interactions. And we have Maddie pointing at him and saying, F you, in a voice loud enough that you can hear it above all of the noises closer to the microphone. It's impressive. We then actively see them ditch old Jack, make Jack a laughing stock in front of his little new friend, new for his new friend. Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Let's come clean, Joe. Are you really new friends or have you known Jack? You sure? 
they then ditch them and they run away and they get in the car. I suspect they might have gotten in the car. Remember when they first walk up and Kaylee is ordering her food and Maddie gets an excited look on her face and there's this really handsome kid at the other windows got on like a, a, a football jersey, like a blue, dark blue football jersey. And he sees her and smiles and she goes over to him and they hug. And then she immediately walks away. But if you notice, they have a couple of interactions talking. He walks around that end. I think she said, hey, will you take us home? And he was over there waiting on her. That's what I think. I think that was their getaway. I think they told the guys in the Grubhub, hey, this guy's bugging us. Please just give us our food. Let us run. We'll come pay you tomorrow. Or the guy said, here, take it. Go home. Don't worry about it. I mean, he actually said, I just gave it to him because, you know, they really needed to get home. That sounded curious to me. And even Joe says that he was surprised because they didn't make him pay. That was part of them being able to get away from Jack. Grabbed it and they were gone, man. There was no paying. There was no fumbling around for nothing. It was just gone, right? So, so they were already with getting into the car by the time Jack walked over. And notice how quickly he reacted. Once he saw him, Notice how quickly he walked over to look, and then he was off, man. Shoot. Well, guess what I know now? Jack lives in the same apartments as Jeremy Reagan, which happened to be right there at their house. There is Reddit footage that show supposedly, supposedly, because there's no way to verify this, okay? But the rumor on Reddit is there's video that was taken that shows Jack's apartment, the light in the windows, and he would have been able to see directly into the front of Maddie and uh, Kaylee's a part of uh, house from the front. Now there's no way to verify that, but the footage is out there. Okay. All right. So I, I, these cops, I'm telling you, I don't know what the, it's shocking to me that we've even gotten this far and you're thinking, how did they, how did they let this guy walk? How you think you think about you think about the Kylie Rodney case. They had a last ping right at the water's edge, exactly where she was found. But they claim they couldn't find her. They're off looking in other lakes and other locations, miles and miles away from the last known ping. Why? Why? Doug goes in there. Doug and Nick go in there and within less than 30 minutes, they find Kylie right exactly where the last ping was. And that's how I feel about this situation at the Grubhub. There's video. You see a guy obviously following Kaylee, obviously following Kaylee. This is a guy that they know beyond a shadow of a doubt has been kicked out of a fraternity for anger problems. But if you go into the boards and you read, you've got these fraternity boys that are telling stories about these incredible hair trigger rages that Jack would go into. Oh, yeah. Remember the guy, Jack, when he gets drunk? He has an alter ego. It also has a name. But you remember the other guy? that I can't think of the, it's the South Carolina murders. I didn't cover them at all. 
but the kid that was driving the boat, he had, you know, he'd get drunk and act stupid and he gave it this alter ego a name, right? Well, Jack has an alter ego, people. They, when Jack gets drunk, he gets, you know, aggressive. And his buddies, the people that know him, they named this alternate person, the the drunk Jack or the angry Jack or the aggressive Jack. They called him Terry. Yeah, the Murdoch murders. Yes, thank you, Allie. So so Jack has an alternate. His name is Terry. But. If, if that doesn't tell you that Jack, on the outside, Jack's handsome, he's attractive, wealthy family, well-connected family, long history, elite lineage. But when he gets messed up, Terry comes to play. It's like a horror movie. So you're the lead investigator. You're the detective. You're looking at the, the uh, film from the Twitch stream. You see it with your own two eyes. You've gone and interviewed the people at the bar. And the bar said, oh, yeah, we know this guy. Yeah, both one, the big guy and, and the smaller guy, they were both here. Yeah, the, um, the, this guy, Jack, Terry. Yeah, man, we had to get him out. He was all freaky with the girls. He was harassing the women. We can't have that. We had to get rid of him. Yeah, in fact, you know, I think he got kicked out of his fraternity. He's got an anger problem, man. He does crazy things when he's drunk and they didn't want to have anything to do with him. You're the investigator. What are you going to do? You're going to haul his little skinny ass in for questioning ASAP. Correct? You are going to get him into your office as soon as possible. And if you really do have DNA from the crime scene, you're going to get a swab. You're going to collect that kid's DNA before he can go anywhere else, even if it is to give him a Coke to drink and then take that Coke can correct? Except there's a problem. His name isn't Jack or Terry. His name is Mr. Showalter. And all that that implies. So he was cleared. And initially... In the first reportings of of them of him being cleared of of any involvement in this, we were told the media told us that the investigator spoke to him and he said his alibi was he was home sleeping. Who remembers? The initial moment when they said, yes, we've identified the kid that's in the video and he was home sleeping. He's got a good alibi. And I remember there were people that said, but wait a minute, he lives by himself. Who would verify that he was sleeping? Who would be able to verify that? That was in the initial early days. Right when it was coming out, who the kid in the video was, you know, yada, yada. Yeah, I think it was even before Joe um, had made a statement. He was, Jack was just sort of dismissed. Tootie remembers. Anybody else? Yeah, I agree, b -Roo. Sleeping alibi. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, sure. There was a lot of them whose alibi was sleeping. You want to know what Joe's alibi was? <laughs> Joe's got the best alibi. They can verify that Joe was holding his Coke in his hand. 
when he got home on his own camera at his house. The same Coke can you can see in his hand at the Grubhub on the Twitch stream. You can see as he's walking into his house. And I said at the time, I smiled and I said, you know what? Joe is one smooth dude. That's a hell of an alibi, right? Alibi by witness Coca-Cola. I thought, you know what? Somewhere another, well, some criminal is going to remember the Coca-Cola can alibi. Now, Grouch has a comment. He is in Africa. Africa. Skinning animals after hunting with his father. He posted pictures, but now they're gone. I think it was on Facebook, but literally has nothing on there. He's been quiet. He can go wherever he wants, not being held. Be real. You know what's happening. Old Jack, a.k.a. Terry, he's being erased. He's being erased from the Internet with intent. They have hired attorneys whose job it is to clean the internet up for you, to clean your reputation up. And don't misunderstand, be real. They are not protecting old Jack. No, 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 no. They are protecting the show alter lineage, the name, the history, the reputation, the old European elite from Switzerland. That is what is being protected by cleaning up the internet. So fellow YouTubers, you guys that were on Jack early before all the big talk started, you guys got in there and y'all got all these photographs and you downloaded them and they, you saved them. You illustrate the need for documenting what you find before stories get big, before the stories blow up. Now y'all have all these photographs. Y'all have all these things that could become really important later on that I'm going to guess the cops probably didn't collect. Why? Well, because his last name is Showalter. That's why. But you guys have it. So you may want to send everything you've got to the FBI so that they have it too, okay? All right, now then, for example, how about the photograph, the TikToks that show Terry, a.k.a. Jack, in Xana's room? What about that? You think that might be something that the cops might want to see? I'm talking about the FBI. Maybe. The fact that Ethan and, and um, Jack knew each other, that might be important, right? But wouldn't it be interesting to see other situations? Were there... What were there other photographs at parties unsuspecting from a year or two years ago that might have shown Jack interacting with these girls? This is not a big college. I'll guarantee you that they all knew each other. They were all partying together. I, th this was not the first time that they had run across each other. I don't believe. I really don't think so. I don't think so. All right. So, so this is, um, the, the photograph, the picture that you're looking at, this is um, the fraternity house. It is police camera, 3 a.m. Well, the call came in at 3.01, and so this is probably done like 3.30 in the morning, um, which is during that window of time where they believe that the, fan, that the people in the house were being slaughtered. So it's a bit chilling to realize they were there and it's possible either that the murders had already occurred or were in the process of occurring. It's pretty, pretty terrifying. 
Now then, so I got done with that. Hold on a minute. Just bear with me. Ashley Banfield has that, uh, has the full, um, well, I can, put, I can put this in the, let me put a link in the um, chat so that you can go to the police webcam if you want to. After the stream is finished, please don't leave me. Please stay in here with me. Paste. Okay, so there's you. There's your um, link that you can get the. It's actually a Reddit link, but it's got the link to the police cam that you can go directly to. But you can't see anything. It's just really bad quality. <clears throat> now, so want to verify that John Jack Show Alter was not Sigma Chi. Not, not, not. He is Delta Ta Delta. And it, the rumors are true. It's been verified that he lost his affiliation with the fraternity. And that is Delta Ta Delta is the same fraternity of um, Ethan. Hold on one, just one minute. Sorry about that. I, for some reason, my, um, make sure it's plugged in. For some reason, I was losing my battery on my computer, but it looks like it's, um, I think I fixed it. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't want my, my, uh, computer to die. So I am sorry about that. All right. But I got it working now. So we're in good shape. All right. So let me find my next link to talk about. Now, I want to remind you that Jack told Joe that the reason that he was there was to make sure that the girls got home okay. Do you remember that? Now, the girls that, you know, obviously are featured are Maddie or Madison Mogan, 21 years old, and then... Kaylee Gonzalez, who was 21 years old and was get, preparing to graduate. She had already gotten a job in Austin. And this was sort of her last hoorah before moving to Austin. She had gotten her a brand new Range Rover 
and she was supposed to be at home at her parents' house, but she wanted to go show her best friend Maddie her new car. She made the drive to the University of Idaho and spent the night with Maddie. She had nothing in her bedroom. We had already talked about this the last video I did. We had already made the decision that the girls were in Maddie's room, which would have been the room closest to Jeremy Reagan. And now what we know is Jack Showalter's apartments. That's what we guessed on our stream. And now that's been verified. I believe, it's my opinion, that the little dog, that he was locked up in Mad in um, uh, Case, Kaylee's room. I think he was in Kaylee's room. That's where she left him when they went out that night. I believe that. I think um, the way that I believe it, that, the, that the killings happened... I think that the killer went in and went straight for the upstairs to do the dirty deed. When he came back downstairs, Ethan had been awakened, maybe heard one of the girls yell, and he came out and was taken by surprise. And let's face it, some of these guys that are under suspicion they're hunters. They're very comfortable using knives and, and dealing with animal skin. And they would not have been shocked by how tough the skin is. They would have been, it, it, a hunter would not be put off by that. Somebody, un, somebody knew that it never, you know, slaughtered an animal or anything might be shocked at how hard, you know, the strength that it would take to do that. So I think that that's why Zana had so many um, defensive wounds and so many bruises. I think that he, he, I think Ethan heard something upstairs. He got out to see what was going on. In fact, one of the girls downstairs, I don't remember if it was Bethany or, or uh, Dakota, one of them said that she heard Ethan talking to him, quote, unquote. So it does sound like there was an altercation. There was a moment where the two guys had an exchange, a verbal exchange possibly. And it may have gone something like, hey, what the F are you doing here? And then that's when it all happened. And, and that would have awakened Zana and maybe she screamed. And so then he's aware Oh, Zana's in here, or there's a girl in here, and he had to kill her. Because if these kids knew the guy, if these kids all knew the killer, then he couldn't possibly let them live, could he? And if you live in an apartment directly across the street, and you leave out the sliding glass doors then the, basically the only thing that you have to do is what is the path of least resistance, and that is stay along the back of the house. You go up a small hill. You walk across the road. There's a dumpster. You can drop your, your dirty clothes in or the knife or whatever, and then you go straight into your apartment, jump and shower. Now, here's what we know about Jack. Jack's alibi changed from he was sleeping. The same thing as Jack Decor. He, he was sleeping. That was his alibi. There were several different people and Joe's got the greatest alibi. It's the same Coke can, okay, in his hand. But Delta Ta Delta Reject Jack, a.k.a. Terry, show alter. He has this interaction with the girls at the Grubhub. And then he follows up by going home at 2 a.m. and getting in his car and driving five or six hours 
to his parents' house. And let me pull that up. So doctors, so doctors show alter. If you're listening to this, pay close attention because I think you guys are good people. There's no way you get to to the amount of training and hard work that you've done, um, not to be honest and you know. And our kids disappoint us sometimes. Our kids do things sometimes that they weren't raised to act that way. And sadly, it happens. But if you're doing some soul searching, if you're trying to decide, do we believe Jack? What do we believe? Blah, blah, blah. Then consider this. The girls got home at just before, within minutes of 2 a.m., like 1.56 or something. And they probably messed around the house a little bit maybe joking around laughing, maybe they finished eating close to 3 a.m. when they fell asleep. Right? They got the 911 call at the at the fraternity house, the, the grassy area between the fraternity house and Kaylee Gonsalves house, like 301. So... Miss Doctors Showal uh, Showalter, consider this: if your child gets home after a five or possibly more like six-hour drive, you need to ask him what time he left. Like, did he come rolling up at your house at nine a.m.? Did he come rolling up at your house at 11 a.m.? Like exactly what time did he say that he left the King Road apartments? Because you know that he didn't get to his house until around two or so to the apartment. If he, if he gets to your house at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., then that would suggest, no, it's probably okay. He probably didn't do it. But if he didn't get to your house until 10, 11 a.m., you might have some questions for your child. One thing that I noticed about this whole map thing from University of Idaho up here going south down to Boise, Idaho or Meridian, Idaho, um, if you wanted to get rid of bloody clothes or knives, would you take an alternate route? Some place that you could say, no, I wasn't over there, you know, by Pendleton. I came straight through like I normally do. Oh, no, I didn't decide to leave my apartment until 4 or 5 at 6 a.m. So there's the path in about six hour drive, five hours, 47 minutes, five hours, 48 minutes, six hours, 20 minutes. And I would even say if, if he was really thinking about trying to dispose of um, evidence, it's possible that he might have come over through Walla Walla and down this way, or maybe even gone a really long way around to try to get into these higher elevations, maybe. But it's, I, th I think if you're the parents, I think you got to consider this. What time did he arrive at your house? Pin him down on what he did. What, what roads did he travel? Did he stop and get gas anywhere? Did he stop to eat food? Get receipts from his, from his debit card. Find out where he was. Don't trust him and believe in him. Trust but verify. Isn't that what they say? All right. So there is that. And now, yep, I want to go to this one. I have to rewind it, though. No, I think, do I need to rewind that? No. I want to start this over. Some, uh, I'm using a uh, video 
that is on Twitter that somebody has really zoomed in on the Grubhub footage. And I want to use this to show something. So hold on. All right. <clears throat> All right, so you're going to see Kaylee, Jack, and Maddie come from right over here. And as they come out, I want you to pay attention where each one is walking. It's amusing. Now, unfortunately, where it says continue watching on Twitter is hiding what we want to look at. But I can tell you right here is the first sign that we're looking at Maddie. Uh, not Maddie, Kaylee. And then Jack is right next to Kaylee, like right next to her. Maddie's just a little bit further back. No, it's fun to watch. See him? Okay, so here's, here's Kaylee. Here's Jack. One of the reasons this is kind of important right here is it gives you, it, it gives you a really good perspective how much bigger he is than her. She's a tiny little thing. But look at how much bigger he is. Easily overwhelm her. Easily overtake her. No, no trouble. And look how far she's kind of walking out around in front of him. And then take notice of how close he steps in right behind her back. To me, it looks menacing. It looks like a power move. Almost like he's saying, you may think you're going to walk away from me, but I can stay with you every step you take. Watch other people dance right. She's got her, she's got her uh, phone in her hand. He's not getting out of her way. He's walking straight towards her. He's, he knows that she's there to order food. He's not stopping to let her go over to buy food. She has to like increase to walk around from the front of him. And he, he literally, it's like he's using his body to intimidate. So keep, keep watching. And she's got all of her attention in her phone. All of her attention is in her phone, even as they're walking. And Maddie's back over here. He, right here at this point, he steps in front of her. See this? He was walking straight that direction. Now he's taking a step out in front of her. He's intentionally like blocking. He is being menacing. The body language is there. And I don't know what these detectives were doing. I don't understand this, but look at the body language here. And in this moment, he looks like he's leaned over saying something to her. If you look at his head, looks like he leaned down to say something. She's still buried in her phone. She's avoiding a confrontation with him. Okay. Here's Maddie over here in the pink. Good night. Still got her head down. Still not looking up. Maddie rushes over to be next to her friend. Bye. And then here's the thing about old Jack. Jack's going to walk out back kind of away from where the camera can get a good look up at him. See how he's got his head back, his hat back now. You get a clear view of his face, right? He's going to turn the hat around and put his hoodie up, and then he's going to kind of keep his head down and kind of keep his shoulder turned. It's too bad, Jack. So many people found you know who you are. Yes. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. Now, poor Maddie is very intoxicated, and you can tell she's weaving, you know, back and forth. Kaylee, not so much. It really does seem like Kaylee's in pretty good shape you know, not, not drink as much. Um, and Jack is back here and notice what happens when Maddie walks away. 
Notice what Jack does. Okay. Okay, so she sees her friend. Now she's walking away. Watch Jack. Oh, yep. Uh, so what you want to do is... Jack doesn't care what Maddie does. Jack doesn't watch her. He doesn't care. Jack has got his eyes on one thing. Actually, uh, do this. Cool. Thank you. Absolutely. How many more do you need? Uh, That's the second one? Awesome. Don's mom. Oh, wait. Yeah, one more. One more. Maybe here. I didn't have a suit. It's right here. Um, and then what was the matter? Uh, don't forget to remove the, the screen. Carbonara. The carbonara. Mac of the week. Here, I'll grab it Excellent. for you. Excellent. And then click see rewards. Enjoy. And it looks like you not quite have enough ones yet. Oh, that's okay. That's good. I do have a big burrito pork here for you. Cool. Now, they had, the two girls had a quick whisper session. And then Maddie walks away again. I think that that's when maybe Kaylee says to Maddie, hey, can you see if he'll take us home? I, I think she's uber hyper aware of creepy Jack back here. And she's not the kind of person to really get into a, a public altercation. And she's trying to keep her head down and ignore him. Um, and I think she was looking for an escape. And now Maddie's gone back over there to ask her friend, hey, you know, can we have a ride home? Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, Kaylee's ordered. She's about to walk away. Let's watch and see what Jack does. Oh, he's on the move. He's staying right with her. Where are the detectives? Are they not watching this? Where's my pen? How are you guys doing? How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Now the camera's going to change prepared, perspective. Derek. So here's the perspective. Now when we finish the rest of this, you can see it's not much. This is all cut up. It's not the whole thing. We're going to look at the whole thing in a little while. But it, but this one, they've cut it up. Um, Jack is back over here already yucking it up with Joe. Joe says, oh no, I don't know Jack, a.k.a. Terry. I don't know who that is at all. But they surely did get very friendly very quickly. And, you know, Jack's over here telling some kind of story. Looks like he's in an altercation. It's weird. This is the weirdest crap. That's smart, Terry. It's probably good to not lose your wallet. Guys, fuck. Yeah, great ticket times. Honestly. Like, Luke, Tebow. Really solid. And they're grabbing their food. And she's videotaping this whole thing. He they're all all wrapped up in their bromance going on. Oh no, I don't know him. Joe said, No, I don't know Jack. Uh they sure look like they know each other, don't they? And then the girls make their getaway. Jack says, what the hell? But watch how fast he goes when no one's looking at him. And when he doesn't, when he realizes they're with a guy, he takes an alternate route. But boy, he's booking. When he does that, he is on the move. Almost like a man on a mission. You know what I mean? All right. Let me go to the next one. Thought this was a very interesting picture. When you see this picture, I'm not playing this video, but when you see this picture, you can see the hoodie guy. That's hoodie guy. There's no doubt that's hoodie guy, right? Look at the home. These people are loaded. So I just wanted to show this. So even though you guys have hired your, you know, expensive attorneys to try to clean everything up, lots of creators have already gotten access to these photographs. 
and videos and they're stored, you know, everybody's got them now. So, but I, I thought this was a interesting photograph um, because you can, it's clear that you're looking at uh, hoodie boy, right? All right, hold on. Let me find my other. There it is. Now then, so so take a good look at Jack. Pay attention to what his face looks like because I'm about to show you a photograph of a much younger Jack. Same guy, but much younger. All right, like junior high. So you got it. You see what he looks like. show you the young Jack. This originally came off of mom's Facebook. Tell me what you see. Yes. This video says, oh, look, here's young Jack, maybe junior high or high school, early high school. Um, he's got a clear black eye. No question about it. Does he look like a happy kid? Does he look like he might be a friendly kind of kid? Not so much, right? Who's he with? Who is that? Anybody care to throw a name out? Who do you think that is with the unhappy Jack? Bingo, Nurse Bev. Shares, shares a lot of similarities to Joe. Looks really, really similar to Joe, doesn't it? Very, very similar to Joe. <clears throat> I should have done this in multiple videos. This is going to be too long. Oh, look at there. Joe's cleaned up his stuff, too. What, how, why'd you do that, Joe? What would be the reason that you would want to clean up your social media, Joe? I mean, you're just, you know, you're just an observer of a, you know, a couple of drunk girls, right? Why do you think Joe would need to, like, shut down his social media? Maybe he didn't want people to see pictures of him when he was a young person? Could that be? Uh, let's look at this. Whoops, not invite, sorry. There's Joe, a younger Joe, less hair on his face. Does it look similar? If you think those two pictures look very similar, put a one. If you think, no, they don't look like the same person at all, put a two.
Boz Mecca. Tommy Larson, Brandy. Wow, I can't believe. So there's a lot of people that think they don't look the same. I think it looks very similar. Let's see. Looks really similar. The no, the it, that like around the eyes. This looks very. I think they're the same. Why do you think that's the? Tell me why you think that's the adopted brother. We do need a side by side, yeah. No, I I don't have the ability to reverse search this because they've cleaned the internet up. These pictures are not available in their original form in the search res results. Um, you can only get them off of videos. Not his adopted. Well, actually, somebody said absolutely not his adopted brother. It could be anyone. Sure, Libcam. I no. I. It's a huge. Um, even it. Let me say this. Even if Joe had not shut his social media locked, locked his social media down, and we could have gotten an early picture of Joe when he was younger, it's still. It's still very difficult to to put side by side pictures up and compare them. Um, at best, you get a, yeah, there's some similarities. It, I, I, I agree. But I think it, um, when you look at, the, here, here's my point in saying this. Okay, let me explain myself. Um, the reason that I made that connection, um, first of all, when I saw this, I looked at that kid in the back. And I said, uh, that's Joe. Like, that's the first thing that hit my mind was my eyes recognized him, right? And then I went to Joe's Facebook and, and he, you know, he's got it all set to private. But then when I zoomed in on that younger picture of him, then I could really see the, the similarities be, between this young man. So one thing about Joe, when you watch his interview, He's a really a handsome, attractive guy, right? He's, he is somebody, I don't remember who it was. Um, somebody said that he looked almost like Polynesian and, and uh, maybe, but never, whether it's Polynesian or, or whatever, um, Joe's really handsome. He's got like a really pretty face and this kid back behind Jack, same really handsome kid, really pretty, you know, attractive. So, so it occurred to me, gosh, they look awfully similar. And then when I pulled up that old photo of Joe, you know, that is his flag on his Facebook, I thought, well, maybe it could be. And, and the reason that I felt this is that, um, they, they adapted so quickly together on the video at the Grubhub that it, it wasn't like meeting someone and then your personalities click. It's like they knew each other. It was like instantly there was this um, communicate, this comfortable communication that you really only get between people that really are friend, you know, really know each other. So I felt like watching the video, I felt like they sure do seem like they know each other. I know the cops came out and said, no, they don't know each other, blah, blah, blah. But I can't shake that. When I look at it, watching their body language, these look like two people that are very, very comfortable with each other. They know each other well. And so I went looking for some kind of connection between them. And that that's when this ended up, you know, rolling up. So, all right. Um, Joe announced he would be erasing his internet. I'm not sure he, did he erase it or did he, um, 
did he erase it or did he just set it all to private? Yeah, boss. Um, so boss says the police already cleared this poor kid. Got to trust the process. I can't do that. You know why, boss? We got the same messaging about the K Kylie Rodney case. Trust the process. Anybody in their right mind recognizes that what happened with Kylie Rodney was a miscarriage of justice. It, it, the absolute, no matter what kind of story you want to put out there, no matter what way you want to explain it, explain it away, there's one fact, a bona fide fact that is indisputable. And it is the, we're in the Kylie Rodney case. It is this. They had a last known location due to her phone pinging. It is exactly where she was located by people that were out of town, uninvolved. Why is it, how is it that you had divers, you had boats, you had drones, you had people in canoes and kayaks, you had people in every way, shape, form, and fashion looking for this child. They had a last known location. They had a ping. And now we know they had video of that car going in the water. Don't tell me that there wasn't a cover up. Now, so that's why I don't trust the process. I don't trust the process when little Mr. Moneybags here with the black eye is seen on camera harassing Kaylee bigger than Dallas. They ditch him. And an hour later, four kids are slaughtered. One of them decapitated. No, I don't trust him. I don't trust the process. And I think I was struck watching Joe's interview. I was struck by how pretty his face is. You know, it's, it's um, uniquely attractive. And when I saw this kid, I thought, wow, that looks very much like Joe. Looks very similar to him. All right. And unfortunately, we can't look anymore because he's, you know, chosen to make his stuff private. And I get that. There's, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. All right. Now I'm going to what? I don't want to do this one. I'm going to save this one for another video. I've already done this one. Is this my, I think this is my big video. Yeah, this. All right. So now where, how am I on time? Ooh, 6.30. Gosh. Um, all right. Well, we might as well, should I do this or should I start a new live? It is, I've been an hour and a half. No, I'm going to wait and do my Joe and J Jack and Joe video. I'm going to do it on a separate video because I'm out of time. Now, here's what I do on the show right here. Wow, I can't believe that looks, they look so similar. I thought more people would see. I'm wrong, obviously, on that because a lot of you don't see the connection. All right. So let me take this down and then let me share. All right. So who knows who this guy is? This is at the the uh, police press conference, the update on the condition of the case, the investigation. Who's this guy? Well, he's the president of the University of Idaho. Uh, Scott Green, president of the University of Idaho. Um, last name is spelled G-R-E-E-N, like the color. First, we, we continue to extend our heartfelt condolences to the families and friends of the victims. 
As stated earlier, we want justice and appreciate. Okay. Now, here's my problem with this. This these four murders did not happen on university property. They happened in a private home. There should be no connection between the this college in terms of an issue that the president would come out and comment on. Of course, there's connections. Of course, there's connections with the Greek life, a graduating senior. Um, the, of course, I'm not saying that people aren't identifying University of Idaho with these four murders. I'm saying a legal standing that the president of the university would come out and make a comment, a, a, a comment during a law enforcement update. That's what's so weird to me. I thought, what? Why are the investigators having this guy commenting during an update on the investigation? He doesn't know anything. President Green doesn't know a damn thing about law enforcement or what these four kids experienced the night that they were slaughtered. He knows nothing. His, the appropriate place for President Green would have been during the memorials. That's when he should have gotten up and addressed the, the student body and offered support to the family and friends, right? Not during a law enforcement update on the investigation. This was so clumsy. The optics on this are so screwed up. And I thought, why? Why would this guy be invited to come speak at a law enforcement thing? Well, would it be interesting to know how much the doctor's show altar contribute to the university every year? I mean, essentially, this guy right here, President Scott Green, essentially, he is a politician in the state of Idaho. He's in the top, he's in the top echelon, the upper echelon of state politics. And we know that the showalters, that the family are very active in Idaho politics. Was this, was this, is his job as part of the investigation to smooth over the reputation of the university? We heard Kaylee Gonzalez's father say with, with a great deal of animosity and anger and frustration that the university did not want to put out wanted or searching or be on the lookout posters. They did not want anything up that would suggest, hey, we got a killer in the midst. And he's frustrated by that. And, and rightfully he should be. What are they going to do if they get another couple of kids killed? Oh, then we'll take it seriously? It's not enough that four died and it within one hour? So I think that the dad is letting the cat out of the bag um, that he feels like what should be happening with the investigation is not what is happening with the investigation. That there seems to be some outside force that is making this all about um, image management rather than prosecution of a crime. And, and I have to ask myself, who's exerting, the, who's exerting the pressure? This is more than University of Idaho reputation because University of Idaho has been, been around for 100 years. What else is going on here? Is someone pressuring Scott Green? Are they trying to stop people from talking about this before there's an arrest or a named suspect? 
think it's interesting. And I feel bad for these families. All right. Um, we have that one. I got one more here to show. I'm going to go ahead and show this picture of Joe. Joe, if you watch this, I'm not picking on you. I'm just curious. You know what I mean? So here's a picture of Joe. Remember what I said? He's a handsome person. I, I, I don't mean, oh, look, he's a good looking guy. I mean, he's, he's got like, um, a really unique look. He's, I would say he's pretty. I know he probably doesn't want to be called pretty, but he's, he's got a look that would be like commercial that like you, he could sell a product or whatever, right? He's unique. And, but it's his eye shape. One thing, one thing I think that stands out, first of all, he's got almond shaped eyes, right? And then his nose, here is really thin. It's it's tall here across the bridge. It's tall, but it's really thin. And then it goes down into this perfect triangle, right? That's one of those things that makes his face so attractive is that his nose doesn't like, you're, you're able to see the almond shape of his eyes. The nose doesn't really take away from the shape of his eyes. So, so this shape is, it's very thin right here. And so you're left with being able to see these really pretty eyes and how they're, the corners are up higher, you know, than the, where the tear ducts are, they're down a bit lower. Right. So it's the, it's the eye area that when I looked at the other photograph, I went, Oh my gosh, that kid looks like Joe. So now that I've drawn attention to this upper part of his, face. I want to go back and show. Show it again. Now he looks kind of, this kid looks like he might be angry or sleepy, but he's definitely got almond shaped eyes. I mean, this end, the end of this eye here is much higher than the tear duct, but look how thin right there, look how far apart his eyes are. And then he's got that really tall high bridge. That's really, you know, really small, little upturned nose. I'm telling y'all, it looks, it looks like Joe. Joe? reach out to me. It's not a big deal if it is you, but you know, it's curious, right? It's curious. Uh, yeah, I would say, I would agree with you, Jennifer Wren. I think that, um, I think that Jack, AKA Terry, I think he looks troubled, right? I think he looks, um, some might even say ominous in that particular picture. And I don't remember if I saved that picture. I must not have. I thought I did. I found a photograph of Jack when he was very young and he, his face was bruised. Seems like Jack is, Jack has had a lot of photographs taken of him in childhood where he had bruises. And you don't know if he's fighting or if he's fighting with, you know, you don't know. He has the body type to be able to do the stabbing. Yeah. He's very athletic. He, and his whole face, he, he actually, his whole family's athletic. His older brother it was a really successful um, uh, quarterback. 
um, played college ball. Uh, he's got an uncle who is uh, um, the Mets, maybe an assistant general manager, assistant manager, maybe. Um, play. He was a player in his early years. So a lot, he's got a cousin who's in training for the Olympics in a different sport. Um, I thought he looked like Harry too, Jen. That's funny you said that. I had that same thought. I thought, wow, it's the Prince of Wales, or not Wales, but Prince of, what? who, who is he? Prince of Sussex. All right. I wish I had saved that picture of the baby, but I ultimately decided, you know, it didn't have anything to do with the actual story itself. Um, I'll see. I'll try to find it again. Um, I know I saved it because because it they've erased the internet of all the pictures. I don't see it right off the end. I'll find it though. I'll, I'll show it in my next video. Okay. So I'm done with that. Um, I got that picture saved. All right. And then finally, the last thing that I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to save, I, I've got a content that I want to talk about with the Grubhub truck and after, uh, uh, the relationship that's happening between Joe and Jack. Um, but I'm going to do that in a completely separate video because this has run so long. Okay. And then my last thing that I want to comment on is hold on um where is it Well, it's not coming up on my, there we go. I found it. So this is, this is Jack, AKA Terry's mom and dad. Okay. She's a pediatrician. He's a orthopedic surgeon. Um, he does a lot of work with children, you know, as well, spina bifida, things like that. So great people, um, really, uh, great reputations they're they're stellar they've done it they do a lot of um missionary work they travel they do surgery and provide medical care to kids in the developing nations and i mean these are really great people okay there's no doubt about it. it's great 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 people um i wanted though to draw attention to the connection to Africa because you know you remember the you remember the documentary don't f with cats if you remember don't f with cats put a one you remember the documentary don't f u c k with cats and it was all about internet sleuths that were able to track down the Toronto serial killer before the cops did you remember? If you haven't seen it, you need to look it up and watch it. It's on Netflix. It's amazing. It's amazing what people can do with a computer and some photographs. It's amazing. Okay. Now then, so you guys know, don't F with cats. Okay. So that is how we have learned that old Jackie Poo is in Africa. So he's in Africa with his family right now. And the way that we know that he is in Africa with his family is because the internet sleuths that did the whole, hey, don't F with cats drama, they were able 
to get into the parent social media and they were able to look at the uh, photographs that she had uploaded about three or four days ago and they were able to match it up and lo and behold jack is in africa with at least his mother and it would appear with his dad or brother because they're hunting okay so that's how we know that this is true now what there there's a woman named twyla dawn show alter i think i just well maybe not hold on so Twyla Dawn Showalker, um, she is no longer living. I can, I guess I can go ahead and show a photograph of her. She's passed away now. I'll show a picture. Hold on. Ah. Wrong one. Present. Share screen, Twyla Dawn Show Alter. Okay, there you go. So this is Twyla. She's a lovely woman. This is Twyla's father, Mervyn Crow. Okay, so this is this is extended family of the Show Alter um, clan. Um, and the Crows are very impressive themselves. They they have quite a history. Their legacy is 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 big, like the Showalters legacy. But Twyla, um, she is part of she she married into the Showalter. She was originally Twyla Dawn Crow. She married into the Showalter clan and um, became Twyla's Sh Showalter. She actually lived, um, she and her husband lived and had businesses in South Africa. She had family originally from South Africa. And so there's our connection to South Africa. So it's not just that, oh, we want to travel. We like South Africa. It would be like, you know, I have family some of my family lives in Virginia. Some of my family lives in Louisiana, some in New Mexico, and I might want to go visit them, right? I, I don't work in Virginia, but I could go there and there's family land there and I could hang out in Virginia for as long as I want to. So it's not it's to think about that Jack may be in Africa to me and you, it seems like, whoa, Africa. Wow, that's quite a getaway. I bet he went there because there's no extradition. No, <laughs> he went there because it's family, because there's businesses there and there's land and there's a big house and this is home. All right. And they apparently like to go there because it's fun. And I myself have been to Africa many times and it's gorgeous and beautiful and amazing. All right. So I think I'm going to end that we're at two out one hour, 58 minutes. That's perfect time. And don't want to go any over, you know, two hours. You guys are amazing. Thank y'all so much for spending time. If you enjoyed the presentation, talking about it, if you're interested in, the upcoming video that I will be breaking down this afternoon, um, uh, extending this relationship uh, or what we see on the Grubhub truck uh, Twitch stream, did Joe and Jack know each other or did they in fact just meet on the actual Twitch stream? I think there's some clues that... Um, I live in South Africa. The adopted son is from Kenya. Is that right? Well, welcome, Kathy. I appreciate you being here. My very best friend when I was young was from South Africa. Her name was Onuma Lukwe. I'll never forget it. She and I used to eat green mangoes. <laughs> okay. So, um, I, so they have an adopted son from Kenya. Interesting. Anybody have a picture of him or know his name or anything? 
there was a Canadian freak, I think, in Montreal who killed cats and went into. No, yeah, he was a real. He was he was a serial killer. Yeah, absolutely, Beth. Yeah, and and he and the people that solved the case were internet sleuths. They found all the information. They went to the cops time and time and time again and said, this is the guy, this is the guy, this is the guy. Couldn't get anybody to believe them until finally, you know, they started, you know, paying attention to what was being brought to them. So, okay. So thank y'all for being here. I appreciate you. If you have not yet subscribed, I hope you hope you will. So you'll get the notifications when I break down the Grubhub video. Um, I've got some other things I'm going to talk about related to the Idaho four, but I do feel like this information about Jack is, is worthwhile to discuss. I did want to bring in a little bit of perspective just on background and behavior and identity and how that can feed into anger. Um, so I hope that I achieve that at the beginning of this video. Um, if you enjoyed the content, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. That will help me make the algorithm pay attention to my channel. And as always, I invite you to leave a comment under this video. Yes, the algorithm loves it when you guys leave a comment. So if you just want to put your shopping list under there, I'm totally into that. That'd be great. We just need to juke the algorithm every now and then say, hey, we're here. We're here. Pay attention to us, please. All right. I'm going to be back. I'll be working this morning. I work, I think, until about one. And then I'll be doing the Grubhub Twitch stream video. It'll probably take a couple hours to do that. So, all right. Y'all are amazing. Thank y'all for sharing the morning with me. I ask you again, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and put your shopping list below. All right. Y'all have a wonderful day. It is Wednesday. It is hump day. Whoop, 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 whoop.